porch. Eight by about eighteen. Kitchen. Kitchen is about sixteen by ten, twelve. Cabinets. Natural wood. Take this. You better take this, I'm telling you. you have to listen to it. He's got one of the They look good? Yeah. Two layers, a couple of loose shingles up there, but they made a repair. So it's a couple of wind tear. Okay. Um, 
chimney's not regraded. Mm -hmm. Top of chimney, you can see that from the outside. We saw that, yeah. The shingles look good. The, uh, you have two flues. It's actually lined, terracotta line and chimney. Uh, looking at it from the ground and how loose it is up top, I'm thinking it's probably not. What happens is uh, there's no drip cap up there. There's, when you build the chimney up and brick, it goes up like this and it'd be flat with the brick and you'd have the terracotta sticking out, you would pour mortar, have it pitched, so you have a slope so when rain hits it drips off, a mortar drip cap. Right. Uh, there is none. So you got a lot of loose brick up there and then the water just goes in and gets between the terracotta and the brick, it freezes, it thaws, all that brick stays wet on both sides and it just starts to crumble down. If it's not a dress, you're going to have things falling off of that chimney, obviously. Right. The flues look okay. Uh, the heater flue looks all right. Minor pitting on the terracotta. Fireplace side, same, th same thing. There's a uh, pitting on the terracotta going down, but there's no sections missing or anything like that. But I can see as far down as I'm looking. Uh, I would certainly recommend rebuilding the chimney uh, for the top three feet or four feet. Uh, contractor, as it starts knocking down, will get to the point where it's solid and then take it up the rest of the way. So it may only be a couple feet, it may go down to the roof line. That's all uh, uh, up for debate from a, a contractor. That'll be a major defect, by the way, because okay. it is so loose. Mm -hmm. uh, Anderson bricks that that's going to fall right down, mm -hmm. you know, you have a, a concern for safety for anybody on the ground, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, you get a couple outs, and there should not be many. There's one there. One here, my thing's falling out of the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me it's knob and two. Uh, no knob and two here. How old is the building? The staining you have up on the rafters, there's right. nothing. This has all this dust right. on it. So there's no water dripping down on the inside. No stains, okay. which uh, indicate it hasn't probably leaked in, in several years at the very least. Right. Good sign. So we're in good shape there. <laughs> I put them in the wall and I get ripped out of the right. wall. My notes will say, recommend adding yeah, a rally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mouthwash, okay. They do mouthwash, okay. needs deodorant, there's the guys are good. It's fine. Look, shirts are on a hanger. Look at guys. 
other than farmhouse with five guys. And yeah, I think you know. Except we knew they were going to tear the house down, so yeah. we had no interest in keeping yeah, it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Right. You know, we need some heat from the fireplace downstairs. Yeah. Just got a hole in the floor, yep. light it up. You yeah, know. oh, God. They went, they went nuts. Not me. They went nuts. No, uh -huh. yeah. I was only there for two years. <laughs> Where was this at? Fort Washington. They built townhomes. Kravitz owned the property. It was an old farm. They had 40 acres and a farmhouse and a barn. So somebody rented the barn, put horses in, and, and he just rented the the house until he can get, you know, I guess develop it or the property or whatever. So, I mean, we knew the barn was, the farm was coming down the house. And so, it was a, it was a mess. It was party central. And no one cared about anyone. Anyway. I was looking at a house like that in a uh, daily camp. Yeah. 210 years old. Yeah. And kids yeah. in their beer bottles all over. Yeah. Beer bottles in there. Yeah. Party house at the same way. They'd probably tear it down. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame though because some of them were nice. I mean, this, yeah. this house would have been nice, you know. Even if, even if they kept an acre or two around it and, and redid it, you could, yeah. you know, but the cost to do that's unbelievable. Yeah, this had two acres, but, man, yeah. it was, of course, a fortune. But yeah. With a dirt basement, you know, dirt floor. Mm -hmm. you know. on the walls. I just want to see mm -hmm. what it had on the ceilings like above us. Mm -hmm. Remember that room's over here, yeah. but there's nothing there. So no. under those floorboards, right. I don't know if I could see. Okay, I can see that. Oh. Yeah, I'm not worried about the, this. Yeah, it just didn't support it. That's right. what it looks like. It just right. I'm not worried about that. I just want to see what kind of insulation is on the other side of that ceiling. I thought there was something major, but it's not. Just no, it's just, the right, it's just like this. Guys, I would too, Mike, you know. <laughs>
I'll you, can see, you can see yeah, you can see a better crack over Don't wrap them around the corner. This is for 1030 at 780 Sandra Lane. This obviously is ripped, no, that's so a bit, yeah. right. it My tells me that there's a, there's movement between this wall and that wall. And it could be active movement where yes, it's a, yes. uh, a wind load. Uh, it could be yes, something as nice, uh, simple as your floor settling. I hate to see wallpaper that maybe uh, maybe this is 15 years old, 20 years old, and then you get the then you get it to tear like that. Um, I don't feel a big slope in this floor. That actually feels pretty good, right. but it's there. You know what I'd like to find out? I'm going to ask see you. This wall, see this corner? I'll tell you that is. Mm -hmm. Can I say it? Yeah. It's the same wall, no. so I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. But. Right. I wonder if he still has the old skeleton keys for me somewhere. I'm guessing no. I'm thinking. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. You know, the, the, they did for a bunch of five guys, they didn't mess up the woodwork. Right? Yeah, there's just a couple of them that came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just, they didn't bother the woodwork. Which is nice. Well, I'll still be refinishing them anyway. Trust me. <laughs> well, it's easy. That way, okay, I'll hang on, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Just a believer pipe? Yeah. Yeah. Usually put them in that little trap door there. Uh, no, they'd be shut off. They would have them on the side. On these these cast iron ones, I usually see them on the outside. Mm -hmm. Just to shut off stuff in there. These rattlesnakes. Look, you don't see that? No. Right there. Snakehead. We keep it at the bars. I need to cut here. Snakehead. <laughs> Oh, wow, it is a real rattlesnake. Uh-huh. 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 What is this, the uh, parlor, dining room, living room? Or living room? I don't know. you call it. The bar area? Yeah. <laughs> this outlet's outlet's ungrounded and has reverse collider. The power's coming from this slide instead of the other smaller one. All right. Yeah. Uh, this will be the... Uh, Yeah, that's the parlor. Welcome to the parlor. 
farther. Like, uh, the olden days, family members go in and greet to shut the doors when somebody died in the parlor. Yeah, that's exactly. Well, that's all horse, horse hair uh, sofas and stuff. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, or else the heat would have not, you know, waved uh -huh. and everything. Or the guy would have ran through it yeah, or something by now. Let's not go wood, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with it. You get a pretty penny for that stained glass. The pieces yeah. upstairs are the sashes you just take out. Uh huh. Genius in his elite. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, huh? Those boys. Oh, wow. What happened? What happened? You know what? Like, it's amazing how we, you and Mary and myself and all we sat there and it was like, you know what? If we're going with them in the no more, let's take them down to a local. And they turned around and they took it because what originally happened when I dropped it off, the agent was in fear. She said, well, what about the price? Said, you go up in the price, we'll take it to inspection number two. Option number two. I said, we're going to put a threshold in there and send it to two, three thousand dollars. You know, I'm two hundred fifty dollars, and you guys are responsible for anything else. I said, we're only putting two fifty in there. And she said, oh. I said, look at it this way. You want to get rid of it? Sit on the market over a year and a half or more. So I said, you know, I said in the buyers. I said, guess what? Nah. You take the price up to this way. You're fixing everything you find in that house. I said, yes. Yeah. So they called I just the gray little table. I said, what? That was okay. the question. Uh-huh. Just off the track? Oh. Mm-hmm. Isn't that pretty? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Remember I said you had a fireplace and right. a, there's no fireplace in here, is there? Yeah, two clues. One's the heater side and one's going to be your uh, be this side or the stove side, which may have been in over here. Right. Yeah, let me get, let me get my bearings yeah. in the basement and kind of see where where that would go. Yeah, that's the room I'm really interested in the basement. Yeah. I think I've ever seen it. Your utility sink. They're called efficient and they take up the space that they need and that's it. Yeah, that was really small. Oh, uh, no airplane thing, huh? Oh, 
hot water. how this one's set up. It all it looks like this well, this one here, all they did was when they poured this basement, they they framed a hole in here. So I this was sloped. put in here, right, this was put in here to take water that got in the basement into it. Right. Most sump pits traditionally are designed to take water as it rises because the ground gets wet. As it rises from below us, it doesn't come onto the floor. It would be pumped out prior to that. So that's what most of them would be. In other words, we'd be standing on this much concrete, this much crushed stones, and as the water got into that, it would flow over here and pump it out. Right. But that's not the case. There's no weep holes in here to allow the water to go in. This basically is a hole to allow spilled water here to run this direction. And that float on there, what, turns it on? The float here turns this on right, right. here, yeah. You've got water in it, but of course, that doesn't tell hot. That doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't tell me you have water in the basement. It tells yeah. me that they're putting water into it. Right. They do the, they do the wash and water's going to go in. All right? Okay, so you use these tubs and you get the flow from there into the sump. And that, that pump. Let me show you what the problem is. Oh. This, this pumps it into this pipe here, and that copper pipe that runs along the wall. Okay. All right? Okay, pump up in the... All right, okay. The uh, problem is that the sump pit's designed to take groundwater right. out of the basement, not dirty water. Right. So you're putting potable water into the sump pit and then pumping it outside. Right. Now, I don't know which, I don't know where it goes, all right? Uh, is there a possibility that it goes to, here's your main sewer pipe, remember you're on public sewer now, right? Right. So this would have originally gone out here, maybe gone to a uh, on-site system, and then when they put public in, they probably dug a hole, tapped into it, ran out to the street. It's probably a scenario, but regardless, I can't see that. Right. I do know that this pipe doesn't go into here, it goes out the wall on this other side, right behind this workbench. You come over here, you'll see it. Yeah, come over here, you'll see it. Right here. If you look right down here, you can see that it goes right through the wall there. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It goes down and goes right through the wall. Another cast iron pipe, same and direction. Clean out pipe under there. All right. All right. Now, okay. the possibility exists that this goes to the street and that goes to the old septic, the old, old hole in the ground or cesspool or whatever it may have been. Right. I don't know. It also may go to the street and tap into this over further. I mean, we don't know that. They, However, they dug the ground and, and tied these two in. Uh, regardless, it's a cross connection. It's a connection between groundwater and potable water. So that's the, uh, the nature of it being illegal. You're not allowed to do that. Uh, if, this, if it does, in fact, go to the treatment plant, then you're not, the treatment plant doesn't want groundwater. Right. All right? Okay. If it does, in fact, go to something uh, on site, that would be a different scenario. And I'm going to guess that, and the reason why that may not be illegal is because they don't, in other words, you'd be overloading your on-site system with groundwater. Right. All right? How would I if know it, when it... If when it goes it, to the street, in other words, if it just goes to the street, if it does double, do what a sump pit's supposed to do, which is basically pump to the outside, if it goes to the street, you're now dumping potable water that should go to the treatment plant out to the street. Okay? So either way, because this, that's just a vent. This is your uh, lawn, this is your dishwasher drain, and this other one coming off here is your kitchen sink. That one goes up here, goes to your kitchen sink. Right. Okay? So they are tied into the same drain pipe as your sump. All right? That's illegal. So. The correction's real easy, real easy. These pipes, first of all, someone's going to have to evaluate where that goes. Right. Yeah. All right. But let's say I don't even know where they go. Right. If these pipes, the, the, the kitchen sink and the uh, and the dishwasher drain into this, that's right. exactly what's supposed to be. Right. All right. And the, the, and then what you do is you take your sump pit and you take it and you just pump it to the outside. Just on ground, just on ground, just above ground. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, now right. you need to get yeah. this. this you need to get this. You need to get this to be pumped to the uh, to the drip, to the sewer pipe. All right. That's the imperative. Now, the, uh, a washing machine can pump eight feet. You just drop it in here. Oh, it can. Oh yeah. You can pump up eight feet high. You can pump up to the ceiling here. Okay. All right. So this is plenty of room. You put a little T on or a trap, and you actually need a trap, and you stick it in. Okay. So somewhere along here, you stick a little trap, a standpipe, drop it in. That's okay. Now you gotta get your wash right. your wash tub up. Uh, it's a little bread box. It's a 
con it's a uh, drain pump that sits underneath there. It's kind of like a little mini float, and as that gets high, it just pumps it into it, and that can pump anywhere. All right, that would be the repair, and that's about 200 bucks. Uh, but there's some alterations here that are more than 200, obviously, by the plumber. Right. Evaluating that, making this mm -hmm. pitch this way, tapping into here. What are we running now? You hear it run down there? That was the, uh, that's going to be too small right. drain. Okay, so let's go in here. All right. So the, the God knows where. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, hold on. Okay. <laughs> what do you know what's going to happen? Yeah. Now, you see this connection here. Yeah. That's going out the wall. Wow. You know, that, that may have been where the old stuff went. Came up and went through there, and they tied this in. That, that almost looks like exactly what happened, but I'm not sure why they would change that. But. Mike, could you do me a favor for yeah. Mr. Uh, Lines? Mike Lines, you, you too, and Mike can get some confused. Oh. Mike, Mike, can you explain? I tried to explain to him summer winter hookup. Yeah. Uh -huh. He didn't understand, like, he doesn't have a hot water tank. And I wanted to explain this to him so he has an understanding. Uh, how he has water on, the, you know, water on demand constantly, like hot water. Yeah. yeah. domestic water loop that goes to your spigots. All right, anything, there's two separate set of coils that run through this. One is this bigger one which goes through here for you and comes, to, uh, comes up through here is for your radiator. Right. There's another smaller one that runs in here. It probably goes, the unbolt this and runs right through and it's got a series of loops that run back and forth and as the water runs through that, uh, cold water goes in, hot water comes out. When you turn on the faucet, hot water's coming out. So that coil starts to cool and it gets to below a certain temperature this boiler kicks on and it heats right. it up. So you're constantly running water and you'll get hot water coming out. Right. Uh, it doesn't... This is it. This is it. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. This, is, the this right. is it for the hot water. You got cold in, cold in, hot out. We run that. The dishwasher run it. It's for hot water. So that's what's kicking this on. That's why when we didn't have the thermostat on, uh, that's why when I turned this on to heat the radiators, the coil in here for the, the uh, radiators was already hot. So the circulator motor kicked on and it was drawing water through and then the temperature dropped, and I said it's going to kick on a couple of minutes because it had it cooled down enough to ask for it to turn on. All right. So in that regard, it's working just right. It looks like there would have been an old leak in here someplace. Should have been a gasket or something like that. Hopefully they've fixed it. I don't see anything dripping out of it just yet. How about the uh, circuit? Do you have to boil them like? There's a little, there's a little, uh, you have the right here. Oh, I see. That. Okay. Right. I mean, you should probably put something in there. And I don't know whatever it says. All right. Every month or two drops in or something. You want to have this is an oil burner. Are you familiar with oil burners? Whether it be air or uh, forced air or or uh, or a boiler, either one. It's an oil burner, and this requires maintenance. You want to have somebody come in once a year and change the filter out of this. Being a railing, I'm guessing it probably hasn't been done. Uh, there's a on your oil tanks. There's a filter that has this uh, that that's a replaceable filter, unscrew that and you take the cartridge out and you put a new one in. You do that once a year because that's the first line of defense and take right. the sediment out. Then that runs all the way through and it comes up through the floor into here. And in here there's a screen. And you take the screen out. That takes uh, some more debris before it goes in. And it goes into your burner motor and this shoots the oil at high pressure through a little tiny hole so it comes out in a fine mist and that's what, what burns. Right. Um, well, you're doing that for a period of one season, and that little tiny orifice, little hole gets bigger. Now you're dumping more oil in. Right. And if you don't change that in four or five years, man, you're, you're just wasting oil. It gets sooty, you get a lot of uh, uh, debris in here. So it's a good idea to have it serviced. Okay. Your firebox in here has just had some minor cracking, which is pretty typical of 
All right. That white box in there, okay, it's about an inch and a half thick, and that's just surface cracking. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll kick this on and we'll run it. That'll get nice and red and we turn it off to we'll lift this off and see in there. Um, what you don't want to do because this is shooting in at fire boxes, this shoots a flame in, hits that box and diverts the flame up. Uh, sometimes they, the flame, the pressure just eventually pokes that out of there. And then you're shooting through the back of the unit, you know, with the sheet metal and stuff like that. So again, this is where maintenance comes in. The guy comes in and checks this every year, make sure it's okay. This isn't that old. I mean, it's certainly not the age of the house has been replaced. Right, yeah. Um, so, and, and there's not much that goes wrong with the boilers. What requires a lot of maintenance is this motor. I see these replaced more than these. Or when you start getting a loop like this, it starts to fail. Sometimes people will then cut those off because they start to leak and the rest of your boiler is fine and then right. you put a hot water tank in. You know, you have that, you always have that option. This is, this is you never run out of hot water basically because right. it's, it's, as long as you have the faucet on, yeah. it's going to be turning on. Right. Okay, it's not like a tank that you run dry. There are other options. You put a tank in to supplement this and all those other things. But, I mean, right now we're only worried about how this works. So, in other words, Mike, you're, you're going to have hot water when your door gets out of the shower. This is too great. Like, why? Why does this work? How, how about the two tanks here? Why do they have two tanks? Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, still all the way just uh, All right. 500, what are they, 275 gallon tanks each? Is okay. that what they, they are? 550 mm -hmm. gallons of uh, oil. Okay, right. in other words, in oil cheap, I could fill up, right? Yeah. Well, no, you, you want to get on a, um, there's two ways to do it. I'm on a, I'm on, I just buy oil. I have two separate people. I don't go to a company that services this and gives me oil. They're, they tend to be higher per yeah. gallon for oil. I go to a company who just sells oil cheap. All right. They have no incentive to fix these. They don't do anything. They're just an oil company. All right. Uh, so I get it fairly cheap. Now they come out with the program where you can buy it now during the summer. And if, you know, look at my past rates. I've had three tank fills in the last year. Pay for three tanks up front at the low summer rate, and right. then uh, it won't go up, that type of thing. Uh, or you can go, you can join a co-op with people in eastern Pennsylvania, you buy oil, you get it cheaper, my neighbor does that, or, you know, whatever you want. But, uh, yeah, you know, and no doubt if both these go, go low, and you have to fill up in January or February, you'll probably pay top rate for oil. Uh, this is a boiler, so there, you need to, if it builds up too much pressure, uh, you don't want the, the uh, coils to blow out. You have a pressure relief valve, and that's in the back here. Okay? And that does no extension yeah. on a plumbing coat, says it has some extension down. Right, yeah. Extension yeah. Down. Um, your metal smoke pipe, there's no governing body for the oil industry. They basically do what they want. Uh, as opposed to like gas, has a national gas code they have to follow. Um, with the oil, you're supposed to have every one of these connections screwed together. See, there's no screw in there. Any connection where a smoke pipe is should be screwed together. There's a screw right. holding two together. So you want to screw there, screw over here. There's one there. So you're missing two screws on the smoke pipe. One there, no on that, come there. All right, you got a little bit of soot dripping down here, probably because there's no cap on your chimney, it shoots up. Um, I'm going to guess that the uh, based on what I saw when I'm up on the on the roof, the, the larger size side of the chimney has two flues. There's a flue pipe this big on this side, and there's a smaller one like this on on this side for facing the house. Right. Um, normally, the bigger one, the uh, eight inch by twelve inch one, is usually for fireplace. So that's why I mentioned fireplace. Right. Now I'm looking at this with the old house, as it would have been had a huge boiler in here, would have required a bigger flue. Which so the left side, the bigger one, is actually this chimney. Okay. You can see here's your base, your chimney, yeah, and this yeah. goes on the other side. Right. And in the dining room, that stack that you saw, that, mm -hmm. that uh, access, that was on this side. So the one side is the unused side for the dining room. And uh, you could stick a stove in there. I mean, you could use that flue if you needed to use it for something. Uh, but you could stick a fireplace any place in the house with today's uh, type of fireplace. You don't even need a chimney. You know? But you do have a chimney to use if you do need it. One, a flue, I should say. Right. Uh, run up and down here. Anyway, so you got a little soot coming through, and that could be just the fact that the byproduct and rain coming down. There's no hood on there, and you get a lot of debris going up there. Um, I'm surprised. This is a pretty substantial. Well, you got 167,000 feet units, so it's pretty big. Uh, that's a pretty big smoke pipe. Uh, they could have lined that chimney. They could have dropped the stainless steel just like this all the way down, and you wouldn't get that pitting that I noted as you were going up. Let's run this and see what's going on. There's nothing dripping out of this. Uh, there's obviously nothing dripping out because we've been running hot water mm -hmm. uh, out of the, this loop. And the circulator motor was working and, and that kicked on. So I have it off right now. It's just a disconnect box for this.
are oversized. Over here, you got 25 amp, 25 amp, 25 amp, and 25 amp. They're all 25 amps. This one's wrong. Almost all the wiring that I saw run through the house is this older wiring, right. uh, but it does have three conductors on it. Right. And they usually wrap the uh, ground around, if you look at this, you can see the ground wire, they wrap it around the, the uh, Romex connector. Right. And there it is. Uh, and they probably do that at the junction box. Is usually what happens is it runs inside the wire and at the box, they'll wrap it around the junction box. Um, like this. Uh, there's a wire right here, you can see it right there, it's on that screw. Well, that's not the proper connection because these grounded outlets have a little green nut. Right. That's where it should go to. So that's why sometimes I can test an outlet and find a testing is not being grounded. Because you're not getting a good connection between here, then the screws, then the screws to this. And it's just a matter of making a little pigtail on it and connecting it. Okay, so let's see. We're oversized on all these. I have. Right. How many amps should you have? Yeah. <laughs> I have like this. You don't have that many amps. Like, what if I start adding some? Mm -hmm. Right. Price should go up. Uh, 200 would be, a, well, 100 is minimum by today's standard. Right. If you don't have like three air conditioners probably running in here. Uh, you probably want to go up. Um, let me see where this wire goes. Right Call your sign up to wake them up to tell them to let the dog out. <laughs> I 
Oh, oh, she's still sleeping. She's like, so oh, my son. He, you, you know, he's 15, he'll be 16 in two months. But the thing is, Mike, we just yeah. got a puppy. Yeah. He wanted a puppy. Right, yeah. We got a puppy. Well, yeah. the first dog died. She was 12 years old, and I just lost her in May. So we got a Rottweiler. He wanted a Rottweiler instead of a German Shepherd. So I said, all right, I agree. Because I have to have a dog in my house. I'm going to use having a dog. Nobody goes to sleep, he don't wake up at 1 o'clock. I'm up at 5.30. This, he wanted the dog. But yeah, I'm up at 5.30, letting the dog out, feeding the dog. I'm with the dog till 8.30 in the morning. Yeah, He's down hard. to sleep. Yeah. You know? I'm like, that's what I said. Wake up and let the dog out. <laughs> oh, kid. Mm -hmm. I'll pull up all that information for you and get it all for you. What, where the high school, what the high school is, the elementary school, the whole bit. I'll get all that together. Right. I'll get that together today for you right. and give you a whole package of where the neighborhood and everything, you know, the shoppings one? are, everything is for you. It is. Yep. It's the water. That's your old pump. They're all well. Oh, that's your old well? No. All well. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the disconnect box for all well. There's no wire coming out. There's the wire feeding it. Uh, I would remove it. This yeah. wire right here. No. Oh, is that wire? Yeah, it's not needed anymore. Uh, you can use a disconnect box. It basically comes in and attaches right here and right here, so it's not protected by a fuse. Good. All right. All right. It's protected by. Uh, it's probably protected by the main. One of these mains here. This one right here, probably disconnects power to that, but basically it jumps off of here, so there's no, the only circuit fuses you have protecting wherever you attach to that disconnect box or in it. It's not needed. I mean, I, you wouldn't really put anything on that. Right. You know, since it's, it's an old well wire and disconnect box. Okay. 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 Okay